In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions, diving into some upcoming severe weather. There's actually a lot of that expected and the upcoming pattern as well. We'll just get straight into this video though. And first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery and there's really a lot going on. It's pretty scattered about, but I mean, when we take a look at all of these areas in here, it's kind of a weird shape, but everywhere inside of this area I just drew is having storm in it. There's only a couple quiet areas, and it's for the southwest coast there, uh, and also for portions of the deeper south that's a little bit quieter there. That's a very odd shape. Uh, we have some severe weather happening up here in the upper Midwest and the north central United States. There's some showers around for all of these regions along the Rockies and even up into the Cascades. Uh, we have some activity along the southeast in the Gulf states here, some thunderstorms, those tropical thunderstorm type storms that are high humidity, high temperature thunderstorms there. Uh, and then we can see that there is just this pocket of storm that is also happening for the Ohio Valley and the northeast as well. Uh, so there's quite a bit of activity around these regions as well. We'll zoom into these different regions individually. First things first, we have our Pacific Northwest, we have quite a bit of activity happening up here. The showers are around for Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Northern California there, Northern Nevada, uh, as well as portions of Wyoming. Uh, we can see that there's very intense thunderstorms happening overnight here for Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. We even see some blues showing up, let alone pinks. Pinks is already crazy enough here on the color table. If you look at our northern, uh, or the top of our screen, not the northern, I guess if you look very far north here on this screen, uh, it is kind of by the top, but we can see that there is the light to heavy precipitation. We can see that the blue there is the very top. So we know that this is very high precipitation thunderstorms in here when we see these blues popping up. Almost certainly there's hail happening in there, uh, probably very large. So we have these severe thunderstorm warnings coming in with these very high precipitation thunderstorms, and it makes sense. I, I understand why that's happening at this point. So very intense thunderstorms happening up there in the upper Midwest in the north central United States. Uh, as we kind of work our way further south here, we can see that there's just these pockets of thunderstorms and showers along the plains. Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota as well. Nothing like those ones up to the north, though. Uh, and then for the four corner states, we are dealing with Again, some showers moving through. Heavier at times, mostly lighter though for these states uh, as kind of these monsoon type storms continue on for these regions. As we work our way to the south a little bit here, we can see that there is just these high precipitation thunderstorms around in here. Very isolated, they're going to be off and on, but for now they're over mostly water. Uh, usually throughout the day, it's not uncommon to see these start to move over land. So don't be surprised if you see that for kind of these areas here uh, throughout the day today. Now, as we work our way towards Florida, we can see there's also just some storms offshore here, probably going to impact the east coast of Florida at some point. We can already see Miami and the rest of southern Florida there is already being impacted, but up and down the east coast of Florida there. Wouldn't be surprised to start to see impacts there. Now, as we work our way towards the Carolinas, we can see there are some similar conditions and we have some of these moving on shore to South Carolina and North Carolina at times. Things have quieted down over the last few hours, but wouldn't be surprised to see a stray thunderstorm or two moving on shore. Now, as we move up to the Ohio Valley, we can see there's these very heavy showers, if not thunderstorms happening there in Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Uh, all of these areas are dealing with these uh, potential thunderstorms up there. Uh, and right now they're moving across and they're moving towards West Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania for the most part. So over the next few hours, that's where we're going to start to see those impacts move to. Uh, maybe even Kentucky as well. And then we can see for the northeast, we have some showers going on up here as well. Uh, for New York and then New England, uh, those are mostly lighter though. All right, now what we're going to do, I know there's a lot to talk about. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the upcoming pattern as far as storminess, total precipitation, and temperatures, and then we're going to just dive into that upcoming severe weather. All right, now here we are taking a look at this upcoming storminess. By the time we reach this afternoon on Tuesday, July 5th, we can see that these thunderstorms are going to actually move. Thunderstorms and showers, that is, are going to move into the eastern United States where thunderstorms cannot be ruled out. We can see still up here for the north central United States, uh, around South Dakota, North Dakota, uh, Montana, maybe even into Minnesota eventually. 
uh, we have those very, very high precipitation, you know, the storms with most likely hail happening in there, uh, those storms are going to be still going on to a certain extent. We can see that for the west coast, there is some storminess around, and then still for the four corner states as well. Now, as we move towards Wednesday, July 6th, tomorrow, we see the thunderstorms and just showery activity continuing on for the eastern United States. We see some activity still up here for the north central United States, down through the four corner states. And then we see for the west coast, there's still some activity out there as well. By the time we reach July 7th, which is going to be Thursday, we see a lot of the same. We see thunderstorms throughout these regions, potentially. Uh, so still the east, also into the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley there. Um, we also see some activity up there for the upper Midwest, as well as the northwestern United States. By the time we reach the 8th, we see a low developing offshore of Boston. We see that we still have these thunderstorms and showers around for the eastern United States, extending all the way towards the plains. Uh, the west is a lot quieter, though. By the time we reach Saturday the 9th, we can see some storminess continuing on for the southeast here. Uh, and actually, this really does extend almost up into that region there. So we're seeing something like this as far as the storminess on the 9th. Here's the 10th, and we can see things have moved further south by this point in the southeast, but we're still seeing it up there. And then for the north central United States, we're seeing some activity as far as thunderstorms and showers go on the 10th there. Monday the 11th here, we can see slight storminess down here for the very far southeast and also for kind of the very far north central and northeastern United States there, Monday, July 11th. Tuesday, July 12th here, we see this storminess kind of continuing for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Uh, and then the southeast is having some of that for even further south now. Uh, then for July 13th, it's going to be a Wednesday. Uh, we have a low here, kind of a, just above New England. And we're seeing some sort of frontal boundary maybe happening there, but also kind of like here. And I can see that the jet stream is doing something like this, so it kind of makes sense. So we are having some sort of storm system uh, impacting these regions in an interesting way. Uh, yeah, and then we get the East Coast getting going again. By the time we're reaching Thursday, July 14th, and that's the end of the model run here. So that's as far as we get, but it seems pretty active in the East, although pretty much for everywhere, things are going to be really quieting down towards the end here of this model run. So by the time we're reaching about the 8th through the 14th, expect things to quiet down a little bit, maybe the 10th through the 14th, but uh, towards the end there, that's when things start to really get quieter. Now, as far as total precipitation, this is what we'd be at. This is the same exact model run. So based on that, if you're anywhere in the whites, you'd be pretty much at no precipitation. The grays would be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens would be a, ten a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues would be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows would be an inch to two inches. Your reds would be two to five inches. And then your browns would be five to ten inches of precipitation. So, we expect a lot in the eastern half and not a lot in the western half. That's kind of what this looks like to me, especially the southeast and the Ohio Valley and the northeast. We see a ton there. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern and then eventually the upcoming severe weather. All right, hey, we are taking a look at today. And as we can see, colder temperatures expected for the west. Warmer as we reach the e eastern United States, mostly the central United States there. So, Really, really warm here across the central United States especially, but also portions of the east. By the time we reach Wednesday, July 6th here, this warmth moves a little bit further eastward. We still have the colder temperatures out west, so we're stuck in this pattern. Thursday, July uh, 7th here, we can see cooler temperatures here for the west still. And then eastern United States and central United States still dealing with this heat wave of sorts, especially down there for Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas. Uh, those regions in the more central regions of the United States, definitely dealing with heat wave type conditions, uh, to say the least. Now, by the time we're reaching Friday, July 8th, it's kind of warm everywhere, okay? We have yellows and we have blues for the most part everywhere. It's really all over the place by that frame. So I'm not going to try to decipher it, but by the time we reach the 9th, it's pretty clear there's a trough in the east, ridge in the west here. So we're seeing the warm temperatures return out west. We're seeing the cold temperatures dive into the eastern United States, and that's what we're looking at there. By the time we reach Sunday the 10th, we can see down the east coast, we have cooler temperatures all the way down to the southeast. It's going to be also associated with that storminess there uh, and still warm out west. And then by the time we reach Monday 11th, it's kind of getting back to where there's warmth for most everywhere except for the eastern United States by that point. Then Tuesday the 12th, I mean, look at this. 
We have warmth for all of these regions, some cooler air uh, reaching into here, but I mean, mostly warm compared to normal here. And then it's the same thing by the 13th year, although I will say it's much warmer in the west by this point, so there's definitely a ridge out there in the west, uh, possibly in the east. We're dealing with some sort of ridge type or trough type conditions, but it's very neutral at that point. Now, by the time we reach Thursday the 14th, I mean, it is still really messy. If you're in the reds, you're above average. If you're in the blues, you're above or below normal, but really, it's all over the place there by the end of the model run. So it's really, really hard to decipher at this point uh, there towards the end. Primarily in the short range, we're going to be dealing with the trough in the west, ridge in the east. But we do think at a certain point that's going to flip, and that's the biggest takeaways here, I would say. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at that upcoming severe weather. Now, for the day one categorical outlook, we're looking at Tuesday, July 5th. We can see that there is a general thunderstorm risk throughout all of the lighter green regions. That's where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. There in the darker green regions, that's where we have a marginal risk at severe weather. That's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. The yellow region is where we have a slight risk at severe weather, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to occur. And then the two orange regions up there in the kind of north central regions of the United States, that's where we have an enhanced risk at severe weather. It's been a while since we've had one of those. And that's where we expect widespread severe weather to take place today on day one, Tuesday, July 5th. Now for day two here, we again have the general thunderstorm risk area there. We again have the marginal risk area where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. We also have two yellow regions up there for the north central and then for the kind of middle eastern coast there. And that is where we expect scattered severe weather to occur within there for Wednesday, July 6th. Now for day three here, finally, for Thursday, July 7th, uh, we can see we also have another general thunderstorm risk. Uh, again, it's where general thunderstorms are expected, but heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We have the darker green region there where we expect isolated severe weather to occur, and then the two yellow regions once more where we expect scattered severe weather to occur. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're still out of four out of six. Um, that pattern gets a little flip floppy there at the end. So we've been lower confidence overall for quite a while because there's either been something really big to talk about that we're not super confident in yet, or it's kind of like this where the model just seems really flip floppy towards the end. Uh, and that's definitely what I feel like at this point. Now, for today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Little the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harleymake, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Colasi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Cat Bite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.